for keeping the discussion going. I promise you that um, tonight we are going to be dealing with why you should not worry. I'm going to begin this way. If you are, if you follow our business and our ministry, and if you follow my mission on the earth, I'm going to plead with you for something. I have discovered for the past one year that after we finish a broadcast, if I ask someone who was paid on the broadcast or someone who have watched the broadcast, what they picked out, one important thing that they pick out of the broadcast, Many people cannot tell me. So it's almost like I'm wasting my time. So I am going to approach Nancy and Mary and Rene to ask a different approach to us doing broadcast. There will be broadcast that I will do that is mainly for sale. So you won't see it on YouTube. You just see it on the website to buy it. But the ones that we put on YouTube or the ones we do on Fridays and Saturdays are the prayer videos, like morning prayer or evening prayer or midnight prayers. Those are things that I want us to be serious about. Very, very serious. The ones that we do, like when I put up a topic out there, like what we did last night. Those are very important to me. I can just decide to sit down and just be a writer and still make a lot of money. But um, I want to be obedient to God. And that is why I have, I have a confrontation with God because if this is how it's going to be, then he's going to have to pay me big time he has to. I don't know those who are watching on Ustream whether you can see anything, whether I'm, I'm in there or not. I cannot tell. I can, I can see you. Very clear? Yeah. Okay. Just want to make sure that I'm there very, very clear. Okay. Not by this side. I want you to see me very, very clearly. Okay. Let's see. We're here by the side. Okay, I think I'm pushing it. I'm pushing it a little bit more. And I think I can say record. Okay. I think I brought it down to where you can see the entire thing. Yeah, I think you can see the entire thing. And Victoria, I have you there so that if you are seeing me by the side, interrupt me. Just stop me. Mary, whoever is watching you, you should be able to stop me and tell me I'm watching you, you are just on the side, so that I can bring it into full view. That's what we do. Okay. Um, I, want a, I want a situation that I need people to advise me on how to make the program to be something that you will remember 
because each of you should remember that I taught college for some years and I've been a pastor for some years and that would also affect what I'm doing and what I'm doing now is no longer pastor's thing, it's not a pastor, it's more of the area of the seer or the prof of the prophet or the prophetic ministry and the area of leading and coaching. That's what I'm doing. It's more of a life coach and more of a divine healer, more of somebody who sees for you and give you direction so you go and apply it and it works for you. I, I do not want people who call me to give me a report who just want me to agree with them on what they are doing. But I want people whom, because I have the gift of sight, what we call spiritual eyes. That is quite different from physical eyesight. I want to tell you to go and start something and I will tell you how to start it. And when you start, it will work out fine for you. We want to find out a better way whereby pe people can apply what I'm what I'm doing. Because I'm giving too much revelation. Vivian has told me that. I'm giving out too much revelation. And so people just watch and pass on. It doesn't really is not kicking in. Anything that any book I'm reading or if I'm reading the Bible or I'm reading another book, serious book, I only read very serious books. Anything that you see me doing, I make sure that it's something that I'm going to extract things from there to apply. If I'm not going to apply from what I'm reading or from what I'm listening or from what I'm watching, I'm not going to watch it. Except it's a form of entertainment that just come and go. But when it comes to the serious things of life, I must apply it. I must get something out of it to apply. So I want a different way. Nancy, are you on the line tonight, please? Are you on the line, sweetie? Yeah. Okay, because I'm gonna need your help to be able to draft how, whether it should be a question and answer, which I know a lot of people will run away because they don't, they don't want to talk. Yeah, a lot of people do not want to contribute. They just want to take. But those who participate, when I used to teach college, I make sure that I, I do it with what we call the Socratic method. Not the Aristotelian method. The Aristotelian method is the Roman Catholic way of imparting knowledge. But the real way of imparting knowledge is the Socratic method. The Socratic method means I talk for a few minutes and I throw it out for everyone to tackle a question. The Aristotelian method is someone simply stand and give a lecture and you must, you, you, you must go by what the person says, if not you fail. I don't want people to repeat back to me what I told them. I want them to put it in their own way and be able to apply it in their own life and it will work for them. I don't like, I mean, I like Moses bringing the law, but he broke the law and I have to go back to get another one. You know, I'm not a lawgiver. And I don't like, I don't like Moses, the lawgiver kind of mentality. I don't like that. So please. Uh, someone needs to hit the real button. Yeah. So that's the way we are going. I want a situation that when when you hear anything from me, you'll be able to start thinking about how to apply it. How to apply it. I have aroused so many people with ideas that people are calling me from all over the world to give me ideas of what we should do, start a restaurant, do this, do that, different, different kind of stuff. I mean, I, I do not want to go into detail, except only with those who want to partner with me financially to do some of those stuff. All right. 
Let's go. So we are going to find a different way of doing our broadcast that is for my partners so that they can apply it, that they can remember, because I want you to remember so that you can apply it and it will work for you. Tonight, I want to talk to you about, uh, before I, I go on with what we want to do tonight, I also want to talk to you that I am not a preacher. I used to do preaching until Jesus stopped me. I used to preach. We are taught to be classic preachers. We are, we are. My denomination provides some of the best preachers in the world. We are taught how to talk, how to communicate, how to preach. If I'm doing preaching, nobody will preach better than myself. Nobody. If I really want to. But then I was doing that until I think 2000 and, no, no, no. I think in the 90s, late 90s, was when Jesus did something spectacular. And that ended my preaching ministry. My ministry to preach ended. Because he took me back to what, what my passion is. My passion is to minister to women, single mothers, married women, people that nobody want to stand up for them. And that was what I have always been thinking. I never wanted anybody to pay me. I never wanted the church to pay me a salary. I hated it because it was peanut. And I didn't like all the politics that goes with church business. And God know my thought that I didn't want that. I wanted something far more better than that. I wanted to bring the gospel, the story of Jesus, not just as a story, but as a systematic reality, a completeness, healing, revealing, prophecy, discernment, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, miracles, signs, and wonders, all the fruit of the Spirit. That is everything that happened in the Old Testament, I want it to happen. Everything that happened in the New Testament, I want it to happen. Because churches don't have it that way. Churches are organized as a systemic doctrine. I want to, I always wanted to break break the doctrines, challenge it. Because doctrine is not going to put food on your table. Church government and church politics and, and church culture is not going to give you one miracle. Did Jesus come to organize a church and all of that? Mm. Yeah, but the real thing is he came to organize a lifestyle. A life and a lifestyle of the kingdom. And that life and lifestyle carries with it the entire package. Not just because there are some churches that are preaching churches. Others are doctrine churches. Others are celebrating churches. Others are healing churches. Others are evangelistic churches. So they just pick one side. And I wanted to, be, to bring the whole package to the world. And that's what I'm out to do. I do not just want to be a divine healer. I also want to own hospitals. Because I'm alive not because of healing. I'm alive because doctors gave me medicine. I'm just being frank with you. I'm alive today because Lutheran doctors, not even my church, Lutherans, doctors, pumped me up with medicine, medication when I came out of the womb. And that's why I'm alive today. And several, several times I wanted to go back and they kept me here. So I, I honor medicine. I honor nurses, doctors, people in the medical field. People who help us to have our, our mind right. Mental health. The psychologists. The psychiatrists, all those people, I honor them. 
It's not just it's just it's not just a job. It's a life that they are giving to us. Without 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 medicine, I won't be here. My father would not have died if I was a grown up and knew what I knew about modern medicine. My mom is alive today, not because I'm praying. Prayer is part of it, but also because she has the best medicine. Most of her age grade have died and gone, and she's still looking young. I am against people who don't want medication or shots or surgery. I'm for it. My greatest dream on earth is not just to go around the world healing people, but also to have small or big hospitals in their cities. That will enhance your life. So I don't want you to just look at this as a show. I want you, I want it to be something that is working for you. I mean, I tell God, I pray to you, and I tell you this is what I want. While I'm waiting for you, I'm out to start doing something about it. I'm serious. That's my life. I pray for God to heal me. If he doesn't heal me right on the spot, I start some, I start some medication. Because I'm not going to wait for him. Because they have their own way of doing things up there, different from our own. That's how it goes. You ask God to give you a, a great job. You tell him, especially the one you want. And that job is not forthcoming. Start anything. Let the money just keep coming in. Until what you want come through. Then you move into it. And, and that's why I that's why I do not want to do ministry for people who, who are like, if it's not this, it cannot be anything else. If I don't have this job, I cannot do anything else. I don't like those kind of mentality. It's, it's a self-defeating mentality. Now let's go straight into what we are doing tonight. I want to make sure that my partner is here with me. Mary, are you there with me? Hello. I'm here. I can't help. That's why I'm tired. Okay. Are you out there at the job? Yes. Okay. Good. 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 Okay. Geneva, are you there? Yes. Good. You have to be there. And thank you. I'm going to install that thing tonight, okay? Okay. Good. All right, let's carry on. I was watching a man, he's from Korea, South Korea, but the parent migrated to Japan. See, the reason why I'm doing ministry and business this way is that you've had all the preaching you want. Now you need practical approach to life. You need, you need something that solves your problem. Sometime from tonight or tomorrow, I don't know when I'll finish installing something. You will be able to, if you cannot afford all the money in the world to pay a thousand dollars for me to kick in your dream and your, and your, Geneva, what is it? Dream and a destiny activation, something like that. And the rest of the things that cost a lot of money for me to do, that takes me time to do. If you want quick fix, like you want to go to a burger joint. Gen Geneva, are you there? Yeah. Good. If they want, I mean, you can explain it to them better than I do. If you want quick miracles, quick this, quick that, you want me to see for you for five minutes, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or 30, matter how we set it up. I'm going to charge you by the minutes. Then you can still have... The same thing, quick, and you go, the problem is solved. It's like aeroplane. 
you wanna sit first class, you got it. You wanna sit economy, you got it. You wanna sit at the back, you got it. But the point is that you get there. That's the most important thing. You, the, 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 the captain is gonna take you there. So don't worry about it. Because many of you, when you see the big money, it's frightening. So now I want to bring it down where everyone can afford it. Let's go. I saw this guy on Bloomberg television. You guys do not know that's, that is my best TV. It's not CNN or Fox or MSNBC. My best TVs are Bloomberg and um, anything that has to do with money and business. And then followed by PBS and, and BBC and other mass media that is centered on business and money and creating wealth. Because that's what I'm here to do. Nancy knows that, Geneva knows that, Mary knows that, Trees knows that, Rene knows that. There are some of you that follows me only for the spiritual things. You are going to enjoy that a lot from me. But then there are others that I want you to follow me because of the creation of financial explosion. Follow me because of that also. Don't limit yourself only to the spiritual. Let's go. I was watching this guy that is from South Korea. His parents are from South Korea, but they migrated to Japan. I watched him. He lost 70 billion. He went into almost bankrupt. He, he, he got bankrupted. He lost 70 billion. We are not talking of 70 million or 70,000. 70 billion. I love to watch uh, David, I think, Robertson. I think that is his name. I hope I'm correct. Please, if I'm not, correct me. On Bloomberg TV. And um, he was interviewing this, this guy. Uh, I'm not mentioning his name here. His name starts with an M and end with, a, with an S. I've also watched other, other men that he has interviewed, how they've lost money. I also listened to Florence. Florence, my love, are you there tonight? Good evening or good morning or good afternoon. Yeah, I'm here. Good. There is a guy, there is a guy from Australia. He's one of the richest men in Australia. I think his name starts with Peter. Maybe you know him. Peter something. And um, I just mentioned his first name. I'm not mentioning his last name. Um, Peter, I've listened to, I've watched his, I've watched him uh, talk and listen to him. Those are the kind of people that I want to listen to. I'm not listening to, if you think that I spend my time watching and listening to gospel, then you, you are making a mistake. Because, you see, when you look at the Bible, the Bible is not about, strictly speaking, worship. Worship is already encoded. It's part of it. But in every approach that divinity approached humans, that is God Almighty, divinity is an ancient English Anglo-Saxon name, for the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I like that better. I like ancient words because it brings the real, it bring it down. <laughs> At any time God approaches a human being, he does not start with worship. He doesn't even talk about prayer. I mean, except when he handed down the law through the hand of an angel, thou shalt not worship any other god or save. In fact, it's, you, you, you shouldn't save them. You should save him. You should worship him. Okay, that's where we have the classic example of God. And that is a law that we cannot, it's a covenant. The law is a covenant that we, She'll stay with him. Why? 
Because if you begin to look at what is within the covenant, the contract, when you begin to see the contract, it's always about God giving you land. It's always about God giving you food. It's always God giving you rain for your crops. It's always God giving you houses. It's always God making you to be the leader, the ruler. I say, really? It's always God, it's always God forming you so that you can become a nation sooner or later. While you are alive, you begin, others carry it out. See, when you look at what he said to Abraham, he did not start with worship me, pray to me, sing to me. No. He started with, he started with, I will make of thee a great nation and I will bless thee. If you allow me to make a nation out of you, I will bless you. That's it. I've read the Bible and realized that God is far more interested in money than you thought. I didn't know this until Jesus took me on a journey. Not as a preacher because he stopped me from preaching and began to make me walk into the congregation to solve problems. He told me that he himself is not a preacher, that he himself is a problem solver. That's what Jesus told me about himself. And that his children waste their time listening to preaching instead of finding a way to solve their problems. And I was like, whoa! This is it right here. I mean, it was one Sunday, I climbed the pulpit to go and deliver a sermon, and he stopped me. That was the first time that I realized that it's not only demons that can possess people. The Holy Ghost do actually possess us. Jesus can, outside you or inside you, take over your physical body. Divinity, God of heaven and earth, can take over you. Take over your personality, your physical body, your mind, your spirit will be taken over. That's when I knew that at the back of my body, the back of my body, there is a door. That was the first time I knew it. How I left the pulpit and went inside the congregation and began to tell people about their problem and began to solve problems is a different story altogether. From that day, I began to fear me. I knew that my life as a preacher and as a pastor, classic pastor, is coming to an end. Hmm. Every time you see an angel is being sent, it is for a problem to be solved on earth, not for a preaching. Preaching is to prepare you for the solution of problem. It's to prepare your mind for you to receive faith so that I can call out the, the miracles. But today, is that what pastors do now? They simply preach and get paid for preaching. Whereas after preaching, they walk in and start solving problems. Miracles start happening. Start praying for people. Start ministering to people. But that's not what we see today. Because people are bound by legalism of doctrines and cultures. It's always when God meets people. He met Jacob. The dream he gave to Joseph was to solve a problem. The dream an angel gave to Jacob was to show him how to multiply animals. Is that you get what you see. What you are willing to see is what will be willing to see you. Anne, my, my, my wonderful, wonderful love and daughter, please write that down. Geneva, please help me out here. I need you. What you are willing to see is coming to see you. Victoria, I know you like this. Write that down. What you are willing to see is coming to see you sooner or later. Mm -hmm. When you go through the, the history of the Bible, it's always God wanting to make life better for you on this earth. 
first. And yet, our parents change the earth to heaven. And Geneva, don't, don't think that I do not know you and Ladri and Annie and the rest of you. Don't think that I do not know that that is why you don't like church anymore. Because you look at the hymns of a lot of the churches, it's about going to heaven. Look at a lot of preaching and teachings of churches is to prepare you for heaven. My job is to prepare you for earth, not for heaven. Because you already have heaven. You are born again, you are spirit filled, you are already connected with heaven. So why is that a problem? My, huh? What did you say? Oh, I said that it's true. About Good. Like all those, the hymns in church or, you know, the music books. Yep. About going to heaven and a lot of them don't even make sense. And it's like, there you go. sometimes you don't even really want to sing along because you feel like dumb. Singing there you go. Song. Yep. And a lot of people don't want to sing those songs because they don't want to die tomorrow. They don't want God to come and take them to heaven. You have <laughs> My job is to prepare you for the earth. And that is what pastors do not do. Preachers don't do that. Prophets don't do that. They are, they are there to take money from you. Not to prepare you for the earth. My job is to prepare you for this earth. So that you will not envy wealthy people. You will not envy queens and kings and princes and princesses. Because my job is to make you a prince, a princess, a king and a queen. A ruler, a leader. That's my job. So that others will envy you. Not you envying other people. Do you think that all that you see in the Bible is just a, a, a talk? I'll make you the head, not the tail, and you're quoting it. Are you the head and the tail? No. You will only move forward and not backward, and you are quoting it every 1st of uh, January. You quote all those things, and you feel good about yourself. But are you those things? No. Today, I can tell you in my denomination, I am the head. I'm ahead of them in everything. There's nobody, there's no pastor in my denomination that is well known on earth, all over the world, like myself. So what God said, I'm fulfilling it. And that's what it is. In my family, I am leading everybody. I'm the ruler in the entire clan that belongs to us. I will not allow anybody else to lead. Because that's what God told me. And the sooner you begin to lead your family, anybody who was leading there, tell the person to back off. Amen. That there is a new sheriff in town. Tell them there is a captain. Because you allow those people, it will be business as usual. That's why if it is getting education to be ahead, get it. Getting technical knowledge to get ahead, get it. If it is getting quality marriage to get ahead, get it. Starting a business to get ahead, get it. That's why I'm kicking everyone's butt, pushing everybody. Go ahead, go ahead, do something, do something, do something. I mean, look at, look at God. God. God sent Abraham from a different country to a new, to the land of Canaan to give him other people's land. To give him other people's land. Land that is owned by other people. He sent Joseph to Egypt to give him other people's land. Other people's money. Position that should have been that should an Egyptian should have should have occupied. God brought somebody from outside to come and occupy it. Are you serious? And then when he finished, he finished making Adam and Eve. They came out of the factory. Did you hear him say to them, "Hey, um, you know that I am Jehovah. From now on, you have to worship me. 
24-7, you have to pray morning prayer, <laughs> afternoon prayer, evening prayer, midnight prayer, so as to satisfy me. You start doing that, Geneva will hate you. I'm serious. Geneva, am I right? Am I right? <laughs> start to make a religion out of those things, she will hate you. Ladry will too. And many of you. God did not say that to Adam and Eve. You have to go back and look at the original covenant. The original job description. It is be blessed. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Multiply. See how it follows? Only those who are fruitful can multiply. Those who are not fruitful cannot multiply. See? He already gives us everything that has to do with how you are going to live on earth. And, and, and apart from Jesus coming to give us eternal life, after that, go back to the original covenant. Be blessed. Be fruitful. Multiply. Have dominion. Rule. Lead. Subdue. Replenish. Be a leader. Conquer. There was nothing about worship. There was nothing about prayer. There was nothing about singing and dancing for God. Because God expects that it's already part of you. And so because it's already part of you, what do you do? You face living on earth very well. So that you can make impact on the earth. Create kingdoms, nations. Brand. Brand names. I'm asking God for big money so as to start different kinds of businesses for many of you. If I have the money I want today, I won't allow Geneva to walk where she's walking now. Or Rene, or Trees, or Ladry, or Annie. Many of you. Or Victoria. Victoria will have moved a long time ago. Because there's money and there's business. Business is booming. You think that when, when this thing explodes, that I'm going to look for new people to come and run it? No. It's people who have been with me all along. I want to pay people good. I want people to run these things. Now, there is something in life that you need to know. And if you don't know this, then you will never be able to be successful in life. You'll be clapping for other people and you'll be envying those who have made it in life. God sent me into your life so as to stop you from envy. Envying the Gucci's, envying the Louis Vuitton, envying the Adidas, Envying the, the Walmart, the Target, the Japanese companies, the Korean companies, the car companies, the plane companies, the owners, the families that own banks and all of this. And families that are controlling the central banks of nations. There are families that control the banks of your country, the central banks of your country. And I don't want you to be, and there, and there is also a family, a particular family, that is controlling every central bank of every nation of this earth. I hope you are aware of that. By the way, Florence, this guy from Australia, I'm telling you, he's a Christian. He's a born-again Christian. His business, he tried several business. Un until he went into bankruptcy, every business he went into all fell him. Until he was broke. He and his wife were in big debt. I'm talking of debt in millions. The guy from, the Japanese guy that I just finished watching his interview last week. He was 70 billion in debt. In debt. 70 billion. 
and yet they all came out of it. I was listening to a young man when I used to live in California. I was listening to a young man who was talking to me and a group of other people about his father. His father owned a business and that business collapsed. And he was telling us why he is very close, why his father is his idol. I said, why? When his business club, he said, my father never showed anybody sadness, nor grief, nor unhappiness, nor was threatened by phone calls from banks and other people that he owes money. I said, are you serious? He said, my father behaved like nothing has happened. He was happy. He came, opened his wine, gave my mom a glass of wine. My mom was the one that was complaining and shaking and could not sleep. My daddy was telling her, I don't want to see that. Please, don't put me into trouble. He said, and his father went to his job daily. And that suddenly, another offer came. A contract came and his father went into that contract. Boom! All the debt he owed, he paid off within one year because the new business gave him all the money he wanted. He didn't owe nobody. And now we are talking of millions upon millions of money now they have. Why? Because they applied one verse of scripture. Jesus said, do not allow your heart to be troubled. You think Jesus was just saying something. That Jesus was just saying something. Go to the witches. Go to the astrologers. Go to those who do not have religion. Go to those whose religion is business and making money. And ask them and they will tell you that they read the Bible to extract from the Bible what gives them power to stand their ground when crisis faces them in their money, in their business, in their marriages. They don't cry. I mean, not that it doesn't hurt them, but they have the alpha wolf syndrome with them. Have you ever seen what the alpha wolf does? During the winter, if one of, even the, they are very calculating, in the morning, they want to make sure all of them are together. They know how many they are, the pack. But if one of them died due to sickness, they will all, one of them will, 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 will howl to tell the other. Different howls mean different things. The howl is not just for one word. It's a language that some, one, of, one of us is missing. That's, that's the howl. And they will all start going. I, I've watched documentary. They start going about looking for the one that is missing. And finally, they see it buried in the snow. And then they, they howl for the rest of the pack to come to where that one is dead. And then they take, they spend like a few seconds. The first one to take off is the alpha, the alpha wolf. It takes off. It's leading them to somewhere else where food is, where shelter is. Why? Because the survival of the group is very important for the hunt. The team is very important. When once it start moving, you see it run very fast towards where they are going. They are not going to stay there and celebrate death. Death has already happened. And many of us spend our money to celebrate unnecessary death. Someone died and the money we should use for the living, we are going to go and push it in to go and celebrate death. Same thing we do in marriage. The money that should be used to give to the couple to start a life, to buy a car, to get a home, we go and spend it to cook, to show people our wealth. Especially broke people, that's what they do. I mean, I see a lot of wealthy people, they do that. Of course, they have the money to throw away, but they should remember tomorrow. Anyway. Because sometimes, <laughs> sometimes it's not always the same thing. If you don't know how to handle it, how to man manage money and wealth, you may not have it all the time. If crisis struck you and you start to panic, 
you start to grieve. Because depression comes as a result of internal grieving or external grieving. Deep-seated sadness. Deep-seated regrets. You do not need to sit down and be worrying and regretting because this is what the Holy Ghost told me about people who go into mental problems and people who go into depression. It's not just a deaf and dumb spirit controlling people. It is also what people have done to themselves. You see, Jesus asked us not to worry. That's number one. Number two, he showed us the principle that they taught me up there. And this is the principle. God works with happiness. The devil works with unhappiness. God works with joy. The devil works with grief. God works with Wealth, the creation of wealth is what God works with. The devil works with poverty. God desires to give, give you a brand name or a kingdom or a nation. The devil is to kill you and, and make you have nothing. It's to take from you. God wants to enhance your shining. The devil wants to bring darkness and gloom into your life. And let me tell you what they told me. This is how you know that depression is setting in into your life and that it will be very difficult for you to achieve anything. Let me tell you how. I want you to take this very, very serious and write it down. If you have more paperwork, more document in your house, more than you have cash in the bank, you know that you have problems. You know that you are broke. I'm not talking of if you have financial documents or document that has to do with your real estate, that has to do with your different businesses. That is different. Letters that you get, you they have not been opened. They are lying there. You've not treated them, trash those things that need to be trashed. Document those things that are, need to be documented. If those are not happening, know that you, you have problems. If when things happen, things that are bad happen to you, people say a bad word or reacted differently to you than you will normally, you, you let those things get into you. If all you do, if you are the type that is sitting and thinking and rehearsing those things, you rehearse them, you think and think and think and rehearse and begin to plan how to retaliate, revenge, avenge, and wish that it, they did not happen, those people that it exist, know that you are having problems. You are into mental and depression. You are on your way down there. And sooner or later, you will end up there. I'm telling you this tonight. Those who become very wealthy are people who have made space for crisis and trauma. They've planned their life and also included that in case divorce happen, this is what I'm going to do. In case a child dies, because that's normally what brings a problem and a divorce in a family, this is what I'm going to do. In case the economy of my nation crumble, this is what I'm going to do. In case People advise me wrongly and the business collapse. This is what I'm going to do. You must have certain structures in place in case. In case those that I trust to run my business or run my life, the voices that I listen to fail me, this is what I'm going to do. People of God, if you don't have those structures in place, you will never become rich because you will worry and worry and worry will kill you. Worry will kill you. And Jesus knew this. Jesus is a master psychologist. He knew more psychology and psychiatry than any medical doctor. I'm serious. 
And so he put, people just think that those are just the words of Jesus and that is it. To be read in church and celebrated communion. No, 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 no. Those are words that you are supposed to think about that is supposed to enhance your life and business. Every word that God spoke to us is either for worship or either for relationship or either for business. Please write that down, Annie. Write that down, Marjorie. Write that down, Geneva. Every word of God from the Old to the New Testament is for three reasons. Worship, relationship, business. Three things. And if you allow because somebody dies, your life collapse. You're finished. Your business, a particular business dies. And you are grieving over it. Then you have forgotten that you are not just a human being created with just one talent. There are other talents behind that talents. There are seeds within the seeds. There is power within the seed. So if you think that one business collapsed, one marriage collapsed, one child died, one this happened, one church fails you, somebody, one ministry fails you, government fails you, this happened, and because of it, you cannot function. Uh, your, your money finished. Crisis happened, something happened, and your business fell, your job is not working, this, that, that. Or because you were born white, you were born black, you were born Middle Eastern, Caribbean, European, all kind of stuff and that that limits you, then you are a joke. You are a joke. Let me tell you something you need to know. So that you know that I'm a balanced person. There is a side of Trump that I, I like. Because you never hear me. I always want to tell you what I don't like about the person and what I like about the person. Like Billy Graham that died a few days ago. There are things I like about him. There are things that I don't like about him. Same thing with most of the pastors. There are things I like about them. There are things I hate about them. One way they are smart. The other way they are dumb. I hope that Pearl is with me tonight. Thank you, sweetheart. How are you? Good. Just like there are things I like about Obama and there are things I do not like about Obama. Because one of the reasons I am in the West is to bring a balance. Because when we hate somebody, we hate the person completely. There's nothing good we see about the person. There is something that you can extract. There's something God told me about my approach to human being and only Geneva knows about that. I've only told her. Nobody else knows. Every human being that comes my way, there's something I'm doing with that person. Because that's what heaven told me. Long time ago. Listen, listen to this. I think, I think one other person that I've shared it with is Mary. Because Geneva came into the, to my life and ministry a long time ago before Mary came. I've told Mary about it. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. See, Trump has had so many bankruptcy. Some of them, he has to declare bankruptcy because at least eventually the whole thing will have collapsed. Or the thing was collapsing anyway. He also used it to better himself. He knows the weaknesses of governments, the weaknesses and how propaganda machine works. Obama didn't know it. Obama has law knowledge, social knowledge, intellectual knowledge as a constitutional lawyer. That's a professor but he does not have business skills. That's what is lacking. He does not have political skills. That's what is lacking. One of the best president that has ever arisen in American history 
was Bill Clinton. And if you ask me, I'll tell you why. Because he's a world, he's a world player. He's <laughs> a world player. You can define him by Monica Lewinsky, but that's not my definition of him. My definition of him is that he's a world player. You bring it on politics, cook, he's good at it. However you want to bring it, he's good at it. The Bushes are top business people. But this is what you should learn from Trump. What is the weakness of the society in which I live? How do I use the social media to make people believe in my lies? He's a master liar, master manipulator. He's not a good businessman, but he understands the language of money. How do you connect with people so that they give you money? He knows it. How do you tell people outside the country or inside your country? How do you sell your vision of a business so that they can use you, your name, to do business? And they have a share and you have a share. He knows it. And how can you bring your family to run it with you? He knows it. How many people of Obama's family did he bring to the White House? Officially to work with him. Fear. Fear of what people will say. Do you think that Trump cares what anyone says? Nope. Not one bit. And he knows that at the end, people will love him and people will hate him. So do it anyway. And that's how the world is. And in spite of the, the, the crumbling of his casinos, the crumbling of his real estate, the, the bank selling off his assets. I hope you've seen those things. The banks of America sold off his assets. They seized his assets, sold them off just to try to recover their money. He knows the weaknesses of banks. He knows the weaknesses of the law. He knows how to use those loopholes. You want to go and do your taxes and you go to somebody who is very nice tax person. Why not involve somebody who knows the IRS, who knows the loopholes to get you all the money that you need? Let me shut up here. If you want to know how to do those things, consult me. And I will put you with, with, uh, with my top business person, Mary, and you will see. Uh -huh. and, and we have, let me tell you, we have a tax person. Who will get you big money? So if you want, pay me, and then I'll bring Mary along, and you'll see the result. I'm serious. You want to go to court to go and argue your case there and win your case, and you go to somebody who will stamp and stay, and it's not somebody who can defend you, who can, who who knows the loopholes, who knows how to present your issue and fight for you. And you just go and give it to a good lawyer. He's a nice lawyer. I don't want a nice and a good lawyer. I want a devil to fight my case for me. Because the devil knows the devil. Absolutely. Only a criminal knows criminals. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> Only a criminal knows a criminal. People of God, what I'm, what I'm telling you, Geneva heard me saying this and she said, that's why I love you. That's why I like you. I said, you better. Mary heard me and said, that's why I like you. That's why I love you. I said, you better. And Florence liked me anyway. Yeah, same here. Yeah. Please, please listen. This is this is very, very important for you to hear me. I found out that some of the top businessmen and women who have made money today in different countries of the world are people who family crisis, marriage crisis, 
divorces. They have married many of them two, three, four, five, six, seven times. And they are still moving on. They, they started one business. It crashed. Money finished. They went to another one. And then the money comes. The Australian man started about 15 different businesses. They all collapsed until he hit one. And that one gave him all the money he won. Uh, Florence, that man, yeah. that man has been given authority by the World Bank to mint his own money. Wow. He mint his own money. And he sits, wow. he sits on the central banks and advises every nation of the earth. This is what I'm talking about. If he's not there at the United Nations thing or World Bank or International Monetary Fund, if that man is not present, nothing happens. They need him there. And this is a born again Christian. Wow. Oh, he's authorized to mint his own money. Mm -hmm. this, this Japanese guy lost 70 billion. He went back to the bank and told them to get, loan him more money. That this is what he's going to do with it. And they did. And he make more money than the 70 billion. Pay off his debt. And he's on, at, at the top of the world. Let me tell you what I'm telling you today. That guy that lost 70 billion did not lose sleep. He was out there. He didn't sit down at home quarreling, divorcing his wife, fighting everybody. Criticizing everybody, reporting who who made this business to fail, who didn't make this business to fail. He was out like the wolf, pursuing other businesses that comes up. Because sometimes you start one thing, it doesn't work. What I'm doing today, you guys may not know. It might not be what I'm doing today that is going to give me all the money. It might be my novel, my poetry. It might be my my drama that I wrote. It might be our cosmetic business, our real estate business, something. You'd never know. Sometimes you never know which one will 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 reach the there is there's a name we 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 call it. It reaches a saturation point. Bam! You hit it. And you'd never go back. Let me tell you, that guy that lost 70 billion US dollars, today he has bought into a company that every cell phone, every mobile phone in the hand of any human being on earth will have a chip from that company. Which means that every cell phone in any one sand, that guy has made money from you. Think about that. Remember the Coca-Cola company, what they said? That by the year 2000, they are going to put Coca-Cola in the hand of every human being to drink in the face of the planet. Remember that? That's what we are talking about. Whoa! I love it! That's what we are talking about. So those who want to sit down and think and tell me sad stories of what happened in their past, sooner or later I'm going to dump your butt and I'm going to pursue and move forward for people who are not ready to do that who are ready to begin to look for other opportunities that will make them more money than what they lost. Instead of you sitting down there and crying over your husband did this, their wife did this, their children did this, the same people, the same children, if you make it tomorrow, they will rally around you. Because let me tell you, children will go to where there is food and where there is money and where there is care. Those people who are telling you, then did this, did this, that, that. When you move forward on your own and have the right people to advise you, to, to, to help you and help you build a brand, help you stay in the right job, when you begin to make the money, have the fine houses, the fine cars, and the same people who were talking trash against you will be standing by the side of the road and saluting you and give you honor. That's how the world works.
They want you to sit down there because one thing happened to you. That's the reason why you are, your life has come to an end. One thing happened to you. That's why you should go and shoot people. One thing happened to you. That's why you cannot function. That's why you got depressed. Really. And let me add something to you tonight that you need to know. <laughs> I want to add something to you tonight that you need to know. Every life and every business, many a times is a trial and error. And if you are not ready to fail, and to see criticisms, then don't try to enter into the business world. Don't try to pursue money. Don't try to get a job. If you are not ready to buck with people, if you are not willing to negotiate with people, if you are not willing to be quiet and go about your job, and not come to your job to look for love and to look for those who hate you, who like you, who do this, but you are going there because you want to give a good service or sell a good product and earn a good paycheck, then you are not ready for life. Because life is willing to reward those who are willing to try. If you are because you've never been to so -so and so country, you don't know how to go there all by yourself, you don't know how to move here, you don't know how to do this, I put latrice on the phone to talk to somebody yesterday and the person lives in a particular city in America and the person wanted direction. I said, do you live in that city? The person said, yes. I said, if you are able to watch me on YouTube, why can't you use the same Google to find your way about? With Google Voice or you type something in and you know where, and you know where to go and look for what you want. See, some people want other people to break it down to them in A, B, C, D, and bring it right to their nose and hit them on the nose before they know it. They are not willing to try. It's too hard. Too tough. And when crisis hits you, you sit down by the corner and wait for government to come and give you a sad check or a crazy check. Whereas you should have been the one employing people, giving people jobs. Why do you want the easy way? Because that's what they'll preach to you. While I'm waiting for my miracle, I am out there doing my own thing. Whenever God chooses to come to me, I'm good. Sometimes I pray for something he gives me immediately. Other times he doesn't. So those times that he doesn't, I'm out doing my own thing. Whenever I feel like coming through, thank you. If it doesn't come through, I'm already prospering in what I'm doing. Now, let me share something that you need to hear tonight. Then we will stop here. There are two things that I want you to be aware of. Listen to what I'm going to tell you. Every disappointment, every abandonment and rejection in your life, God told me that it's not that he cannot prevent it or he will not have stopped it, but he allowed it to become the reason for you to get back to your original destiny. Every divorce, everyone who abandoned, rejected, spoke evil about you, is God giving you an opportunity to know those who do not like you? So that when in the future you are established, you can never accept those people back into your life. God is using what is happening to you to open your eyes to know those who like you and those who hate you. To know what is in the heart of people concerning you. When you are struggling and in poverty and nobody came to give you money, nobody come to like you, to love you, to help you, 
God is using that opportunity to give you an opportunity to go to life school, to know family members who are talkers, know people who are just braggers. And when it comes to action, they all fall away. So that you know people that you can trust and people that you should leave behind. It's not a bad thing to leave your friends behind. It's not a bad thing to leave your friends behind. Every friend that is just a talking friend, an eating and drinking friend, a sex friend, and they cannot be a financial or material friend, please make up your mind to let them go. Every friend that is not willing to advance in life, like you are struggling to advance in life, you should be willing to let them go. Because if you are not willing to let them go, God will not be willing to move you into the real thing, to make doors for you. Because if God opens doors for you, they will come in and destroy it. I hope you get it. Good. Good. Every divorce you had, somebody didn't like you, spoke all manners of bad things against you and your mother and your father and your family and you. They don't like you the way you behave, the way you talk, the way you eat, the way you all that. that, 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 that. See it as an God said I should tell you tonight that is giving you an opportunity for you to know that man or that woman for who he really or she really is. It's not witchcraft. God says, you tell you that. It's not witchcraft. It is that person's character that was being hidden. The snake, the python, the cobra in that person that has been sleeping. God wants to finally let you see what has been hiding inside him because that person is doing something in secret and you didn't know. All these years. You've been sleeping. You've been sleeping. You've been sleeping with a snake and you didn't know it. Now you can see it. Your family members who say they like you, they do this, they do that. God said that she will ask you. Since they were promising you they like you, they do this. Have they ever given you a penny? Have they bought you a car? Have they helped you to get a house? What have they done for you? And the Holy Spirit says, I should tell you that they have not given you a penny, a dime, nothing. Zero. Because they don't want to. And you think they, they just say, hey, we like you. That's a baby sister, baby brother, da, da, da. And when it comes to action, they, they all, they will not even answer their phone. That's right. They wait until you come back from the hospital, then they all show up. Nobody came to see you in the hospital. God, God said, let me tell you. He said, I should tell you tonight that every disappointment, every rejection, Every abandonment, every every firing, they fire you from your job. Every divorce, he said, I should tell you that it is a blessing in disguise. That if you can only flip the coin, you will see that it's giving you an opportunity for you to go into where you shall go. That's why you should not be worrying. That if you worry, God said, I should tell you, if you worry, after hearing this supernatural direction that I'm giving to you tonight, if you worry, God said that I should tell you that if you worry after tonight, then you are a candidate for not just failure, but you are giving the devil an opportunity to destroy your destiny. No, 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 no. Oh. Hallelujah. Every, Hallelujah. every problem is a disguise. Yes. It's a disguise blessing. Every problem is a disguise blessing. <sighs> you need to know this for a fact. Amen. And that if you do not begin to see things the way he sees things, 
then the, the, the blessing will not erupt. You will only be seeing the problem. Why? Some people came from the house of Jairus and told Jairus that, why are you still troubling the teacher? Why are you still bringing the teacher, that Jesus? Why are you still bringing him to the house? Your daughter is already dead and long gone. What is he capable of doing? When Jesus heard that word, what did he do? Did he allow that word to settle? No, he destroyed that word immediately. And he said to Jairus, what did he say to Jairus? Believe. Believe. Do not fear. Do not be afraid. Believe. Believe in what? Believe in who? Be believe in me that I'm with you. That I am the owner of human lives. I am in charge of death and hell. People are coming to put you in a situation of fear. Be careful about people who come to give you advice. Because many of them are coming to throw you out of where you should have remained. They are coming to stop you from going to where you should have been going to. Jairus was on his way to give life back to his daughter. And the people from his house were coming to tell him, don't worry about it. When people die, we normally bury them. That's what we are going to do. See, that's the same thing I'm telling you tonight. People want that because your marriage fell, you should never marry again. Because they have a doctrine about that. That because your business collapsed, you should never try another type of business. Devil is a liar. He's a liar, big time. He's, he's, his mother is a thief. His father is a, is a murderer. Yeah. People want to let you... Because one thing happened to you and to your family. You guys can never make it. Don't you see this? Another thing that God said I should tell you tonight is this. There is no businessman or businesswoman on earth today who is worrying about Lucifer. They don't worry about Lucifer. Many of you are worried about how when you sleep tonight, witches are coming to attack you. This is coming to do. When you fly in the plane, you'll have a crash. Business, people who have wealth and money don't think that way. They don't live negative life. They don't live in fear. <laughs> when there is a storm, that's when they are ordering wine in the air, in the plane and drinking. That's when they are reading and that's when they are signing businesses in the plane, up there. And there is a storm. The plane swaves and swaves and they don't pay attention to it. Number two. Top businessmen and women do not worry about witches, spells, and all kind of stuff that we worry ourselves about. What do they worry themselves about? How they worry about whether the product has gone to where it should go to. They worry about whether people are buying the product. They worry about whether the money is getting in, so they are checking their bank records. They worry about whether the staff are doing what they're supposed to do. That's what they worry about. They don't worry about who want to kill them or not. They don't worry about what Lucifer is thinking about them. They don't do no midnight prayer. Some don't even do morning prayer. I mean, there are a lot of them who are into diabolical thing to stay, with, to, to do what they do. We know that. But majority of them, especially Asians, Western civilization, they don't pay attention to any of that. They just go about their business. What you focus is what is going to give you what you want. Now, let me tell you something. When the devil sees that all your focus is not about him, all your focus is on your business, and your prosperity, he leaves you alone. Because he knows that there's no way he can get you. That you have knowledge, intelligence, power, and you have Jesus. The devil will not mess with somebody who has passion. 
I'm telling you. Please write that down. The devil will not mess. That is very, very important statement I've made. The devil will never mess with someone who has passion for what you are doing. If you have passion, high passion for what you are doing, the devil will never mess with you. But when you want to sit down and think, I'm brood. Those are the people that he come to mess with. Trump would have sat down somewhere and cried that his father gave him all these millions, he squandered it. His business is collapsed. He has made his father sad and sick. Nope. He kept moving. Today he's president. In spite of his war of life. I want you to see there are, there are business skills that you need to learn from certain people. Doesn't mean that because somebody is this and that. Do you think that Walmart or Best Buy or Sam's Club or, or people selling in the mall, do you think that they have time to think about that the money, the $100 bill or 20 or whatever, the debit or credit card or check people give to them or the banks? Do you think the bank or the different companies in the world that they worry about that the person who comes to do business with them is a witch? Or belong to the occult? Or doesn't like them? Do you think they worry about that? Do they think about that? No. Nope. In fact, bring them more of that money. They want it. Come and do business with them. Why do we why do we put ourselves in a stressful situation? Some people you give them money, they start worrying. Oh, hey, that is that is a that person they have done something with that money before they gave it to me. Tell them to bring, bring me that money I need it. Because when once it is in my hand, whatever. They did with that money, dies, flee. In fact, it flee before it reaches my post office box. Amen. Tell them to give me billions of those kind of money from witches and all of that. Because I want to use it. And once it reaches my hand, I'll consecrate them. They are mine. Amen. Go and look at what David used to build the temple of God. The temple that Solomon built, what was it built with? Blood money, blood gold, blood silver, blood bronze. Don't you know that? Don't you know that? <laughs> no pastor want to preach that to you, but that's the truth. The temple of God in Jerusalem, which was magnificent, and the glory of God came. God came down during the consecration. What did they use in building it? Blood, blood money. Because David slayed nations, killed people, took their property, took their gold, their silver, their clothes, their days, their dad, took them as slaves. Everything that you see David had came from blood. So even if Jesus, God, God said to David, hey, I don't want you to build me a house because your, house, your hand is full of blood. But what was used in building the house? was blood stuff. And his son Solomon, what, what labor did Solomon use to build the thing? Build himself a house and build the temple? Sweat, tears, and blood of other people. <laughs> they don't want to preach that to you because you can't handle that. But I'm letting you see how it is. Yeah. If anyone tell anyone that Ruth was was with Boaz in bed to negotiate for her marriage, you will be like, ah, that's not Christian-like. That's not lady-like. <laughs> I don't know whether Roslyn is with me tonight. I love that girl. Where is Roslyn? Where is Vivian tonight? Women do not propose to men. Women do not go after shoe. 
to show their chocolate, to show their who they are, their sexy body, to talk over business with a man. No. Well, there it is in the Bible. <laughs> yeah. Because she did not just go to Boaz looking like a bum. The hobos dressed like an idiot. Dressed like somebody who came to town poor, broken. Now me said, put on the best clothes, take a good bath, scented bath. Spray yourself with perfumes. Put on your best dress. Look sexy for him. Look good for him. He has already seen your ship. He's already know about your character. He already know that you are a hardworking girl. You are not a girl who is sitting down for a man to come and give you anything. He already know that you go to get what you want. So why not go ahead and get him too? Oh, I love it! Hey, hey! You are a go-getter. You are a go-getter. Go ahead and get him too. All these other, yeah, all these other women are there praying to God and doing dating sites and all of that. And the real date is right there in that farm. Come on, baby, put on your nicest shoe, the best head scarf. And after putting that cloth, spray yourself again with the most sexy perfume. When he smells it, ooh, he's in la la la. He's in the moon and the sky. <laughs> Baby, let me tell you. Let me tell you. I told you guys last night. Love and love and sex is big business. You guys didn't know. Love is big business. Sex is big business. Sex and love still sells forever. It has been selling for a long, long years. Since the day that Eve woke up and put that sexy thing on Adam, human beings have never been the same. And when, and when Ruth went in there, Oh boy, the rest is history. You heard that uh, that Abigail cooked food, took money, loaded, I'm just adding that one, I don't know about that, baked bread, carried wine, butchered animal, butchered some goat or, or sheep, I think they say sheep and all of that, dressed it brought fruits, vegetables, loaded them, and went out. They didn't tell the husband. Patch, patch marriage, that's what she was. She was in a wealthy marriage, but that was not healthy for her. She had everything she ever needed in that marriage. Abigail was a multi, multi millionaire. And she went to go and meet David between the between the mountains. And, and go and read. In fact, he even told David that she 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 told David that she knows that her husband is a fool. Not many of you women can say that. She said, I know that my husband is a fool. You tell me, but why should a married woman go and accuse her husband before a total stranger that that's the first time that she's meeting David? And yet, what you should know is that she did not just go there, dressed like she was from the kitchen. That woman knew how to put it on David. She put food on David and she put that sexy body and display it and said, listen, you want the real thing? I got it. You want the total pack? 
package, I got it. I got the brain. I got the education. I got the sex. I got the sexy looks. I got the sensitivity. I know what you want, man, and I brought it to you. I brought you food. I brought you wine. I brought you money, and I also brought you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what you are looking is what you are getting. You know that. That's the that's the <laughs> what you are looking is what you are getting. Happy girl say you want it. Mm-hmm. That's the lady right there. Mm hmm. I brought it all to you. Me too. Me too. And then Abigail added, and when the Lord brings you to your kingdom, to your throne, don't forget me. What did Abigail do in that day? Oh, she just brought him food. Really? Are you serious? She told David, let me tell you from now on, I want to be the woman whose voice you hear, you listen to. I want to be the one that is behind the throne. If you need the best of a woman, I am. I'm a sensitive woman. I can provide for you. Because I know in the future you won't even need what I can provide for you, but I'm bringing I'm bringing the best to you, not just food. I'm bringing me. And God forbid, if that fool dies, you are getting all that he had. And that's what Abigail did. That's why when Nebal died, Abigail sent messengers to David and said, I'm available now. Baby boy, I'm available. Good, good. It isn't the Bible used. But why should a woman do that? It's unchristian. Abigail sent messengers to David to tell David, I am now free. Come and get me, baby boy. Come and get it. The chocolate is ready. Woo, 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 woo. <laughs> I got it ready for you from day one that I met you. Hot and ready. <laughs> Cookies and cream. And David went and took Abigail as a wife. I mean, I can, I can, when I begin to peel the Bible, you will love the Bible. It's the best book you've ever read. It's the best business book, the best marriage books. All this we are talking on the Bible, all this that they are telling you in the church and all of this, just, it doesn't mean anything. I got the real deal. I got it. Nancy, is that not the reason why you like me? Yes. There you go. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Mm hmm. Mm. There was a woman that was a prophetess in Israel. What was her name? Can anybody tell me? The first woman ruler, leader, prophet, and a warrior. Deborah. Deborah. Hello? Deborah. That woman, that woman knew. She would be telling the captain of the army and said, listen, the Lord has commanded you go and fight. I mean, different thing that you now say, hey, it's not a woman's role. They said in the Bible, women shouldn't do this, women shouldn't do that. It all depends on what, what, what was happening at that particular time. It's not that that is the general rule. I look for what is the general rule. I've, I've given to you the word of God tonight. This is really the word of God, the instruction from the Lord for your life and for your children because you are going to pass what I've told you tonight to your children. I am not going to be advert I'm not going to be advertising other people's daughters and sons. I want to advertise your own. 
when I see a good family that need a good wife, a good, a good son-in-law, my job is to advertise your own children or to advertise you. That's how it's going to be from now on. I want to thank you for coming to our meeting tonight. Do not forget to register for the uh, for the um, Atlanta private uh, session with me and also go and register for the fasting. The fasting for champions, it will blow your mind. What those of you register, what you're gonna hear and what you're gonna see. There's a wind that is about to blow around the world and I want to prepare you for it with that fasting. Take your time. If you don't have the money now, write to me or leave me a message that I should put your name down as one of those who is coming for that conference, uh, who will be participating in that fasting. Because it's absolutely a private thing, only for those who pay, only for those who register. Those are the people who will participate. It's not a public thing. The one-on-one -on -one private sessions and consultation in Atlanta is also a private event for those who pays for it. And not going there to pray for people and going to do miracles, signs, and wonders to give you back your life once and for all. And I'm going to anoint you, break things, and build things, and set you back where you belong. That's what we are going to do. So if you have families in the Atlanta area and the Alabama area, you can pay for them and ask them to come to Laquita Inn and Suites at Massachusetts Boulevard, College Park, Georgia. That is in Atlanta. I'm waiting for them. I want to thank you. When you see the video, the commercial, the ad for both the Fasting for Champions and both the Atlanta Private One-on-One, -on -one, please you can retweet them or put them, send them to your friends and ask them to participate because you never know. One event you attend with me will change your life forever. There's an uncommon anointing that has come upon me and upon, upon the ministry. And I want it to be passed to you. Amen. And do not forget that when you go to our website, Click where he says, the page that says participate in giving. You will also see where you can, you can help to fund my travels, mission and travels fund is there. You can give to Idikai Mary Mission and Travel Fund also. Those of you who want to sponsor young girls so that they don't get married when they are young, you have a page to sponsor such. You want to sponsor, I don't know whether we have sponsor a pastor, I think so, yeah. Scholarship fund, sponsor a single mom, it's all there on where he says uh, participate in giving. You will have it all there. We'll make sure short video to talk about what is on our website. I want to thank you for your participating in our ministry and in our life. Um, I think there was something that I needed to put across to you tonight. Okay, we also need people who will be able to make financial commitments to our mission, to our ministry for a period of a year or two or three and so on, or five years. And uh, you will choose what you want to uh, sponsor for a whole year and so on. I want to thank you and wish you a very good night. But before we go, let me ask, is there anybody with a question concerning anything? Please ask your question. Anybody with a question? Okay. And those of you who send me information concerning ideas that I'm looking for, I want to thank you very much. You have a wonderful Sunday. Please use the broadcast of tonight as your Sunday service. Use the broadcast of tonight as a Sunday service because it's very, very important and packed. Go through it, make points, 
write out points and go back and apply them. This is Archbishop Edikai Mary saying to you, you have a very wonderful weekend and a very happy Sunday. Good night. Good.